Look, I know at least half of you clicked on this video while muttering, who needs a recipe for a baked potato? And you're inclined to head right to the comments to write, who needs a recipe for a baked potato? And I just wanna say, I fully support that. And I promise to read each comment, and maybe I'll even do a little different voice for each one. Who needs a recipe for a baked potato? Because you know what? You're right. You can bake a potato just by popping it in a hot oven. But if you loved baked potatoes, and you've had good ones and not so good ones, and you long for the platonic ideal of a baked potato, crispy skin encasing perfectly fluffy potato that is ready to absorb butter and bacon and scallions, well, this one's for you. The classic potato for baking is the russet. It's the highest starch potato you're gonna find at the supermarket. That starch content translates into a potato that fractures easily and readily absorbs liquid. During cooking, starch granules swell with water within the spud cell walls, and eventually they force the cells to separate into clumps. That results in the texture we perceive as dry and fluffy. Now for the potato curious, russets contain about 20% starch by weight, whereas red potatoes start at around 16%. Yukon Golds generally sit in the middle at about 18%. Dry and fluffy is key for a baked potato because, let's be honest, our goal is to add tons of butter and or sour cream. The russet is a champ at absorbing it. Now the first thing I wanna talk about is seasoning. A great baked potato has a salty, crispy skin, but if you've ever tried to season the baked potato, you know it's pretty futile. The salt bounces off and it turns into a dangerous projectile. The solution is a solution, a salt solution. See what I did? Let's go to the kitchen. We'll dissolve two tablespoons of salt in a half cup of water. Add our potatoes and give them a spin to coat. As the potatoes bake in the oven, the water will evaporate and leave an even coat of salt clinging to the skin. Okay, now it's time to transfer the potatoes to a wire rack set in a rimmed baking sheet. This setup allows air circulation and crisping on all sides. Now I'm gonna take my fork and prick the potato in a few spots. Now the reason I'm doing this is because of the potential of potato explosions. Now in reality, we've never been able to replicate a potato explosion here in the test kitchen, despite 40 rounds of dedicated testing. But that definitely doesn't mean it doesn't happen for some folks. Our conclusion is that this is a rare occurrence, but a pretty annoying one. So we advocate for taking the quick additional step of pricking the potato to act as small pressure releases. Now, if you've had a potato explode in your oven, I would love to hear about it in the comments. If you can remember any stats like oven temp or how long the potato had been in the oven, I'd love to know it. While you're down there, hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon so you never miss an episode. One of the big questions when it comes to baking a potato is of course, oven temperature. After a slew of tests, Cook's Illustrated senior editor, Lon Lamb, found that 450 degrees was the ideal temp because it allowed the skins to crisp while the interior cooked to a fluffy doneness. But there is another temperature we need to talk about, internal temperature. Everyone now knows that the best way to cook a steak perfectly is to reach for a super fast instant read thermometer. It eliminates all the guesswork. It turns out that knowing the internal temperature of a baked potato is just as valuable. Check out this experiment. As you can see, both of these baked potatoes pass the squeeze test. That is when I squeeze them, both easily give under the pressure. So they're both done, right? not so fast. If we cut each in half, we see a very different picture. This potato is soft and squishy the entire way through, but this one actually has a firm core. We can't tell that by squeezing because the outer portions are fully cooked. The internal temperature difference between these two potatoes is about 30 degrees. This is why the key to a perfectly cooked baked potato is to take its temperature. You want at least 205 degrees, but you'll get a nice bud all the way up to 212 degrees. In a 450 degree oven, you'll hit this temp between 45 minutes and an hour which is pretty speedy. So I guess we're done, right? Time to bust out the sour cream. Not quite. We still have a couple more questions to dig into. The first is one that most people likely haven't considered. When do you cut open a baked potato? Now, if you're like me, you grew up cutting the potato open yourself right at the table, but is that the right move? We baked potatoes and then tracked their weight post baking. Half were sliced open and half were left uncut. The cut potatoes lost weight to steam as they sat and ended up noticeably fluffier. The uncut potatoes ate denser and gummier. That's why we recommend slicing them straight out of the oven. And don't worry, as long as you serve them within a reasonable time frame, they will still be hot enough to burn the roof of your mouth. Okay, but let's back up a second. The interior of this baked potato is divine, but are the skins the best they can be? After baking at 450 degrees for almost an hour, they are nice and dry with a hint of crispness. They're good, but they could be great. Many recipes tell you to oil a baked potato before baking, but in our tests, we found doing so led to tough, sometimes leathery skins as the oil limited evaporation. But what if we oiled at this stage after the skins had already dried out? Would it be like slow roasting a chicken, then rubbing it with oil and giving it one final blast in a super hot oven to crisp and brown? Well, let's take a listen. 
Boiling after the bake allows us to essentially fry the skin to a beautiful crisp. We'll cut this open, do that little push, and now it's time for the fun part. Baked potato sundae bar. Let's start off with the minimalist. I'll do a nice pat of butter, some flake salt, and a sprinkle of chives. Man, this is good. Next up, this tangy lemony goat cheese topping that gets punch and crunch from shallot and parsley. Yes, yes, yes. We also have another topping that is near and dear to my heart. Smoked trout with creme fraiche and chives. Ooh, this is fancy. But I really did save the best for last, the loaded baked potato. I need some sour cream, cheese, crumpled bacon, and plenty of scallions. Let's dig in. Mm. Oh man, this is the best. I gotta try some of that crispy skin. Mm-hmm, yep. This is so good, pure comfort. See, and half of you thought we didn't need a recipe for a baked potato. I hope you'll grab a russet, a thermometer, and a friend and get baking. Because this is how to eat baked potatoes. A big thanks to Lon Lam for her phenomenal baked potato recipe. Now, if you don't know this, Lon has her own YouTube show called Technically, where she gets nerdy about all kinds of cooking techniques. It's incredible. There's a link below to her episode on the best way to sear a steak. Down there, you'll also find a link to cooksillustrated.com slash what's eating Dan, where you can find every recipe from every episode from all 80 episodes. Now don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon. And most important of all, have you had a baked potato explode in your oven? I want the juicy gossip. Let me know.